So it's been a little while since I've done an update on the GameCube collection, and a lot of that has to do with it just being harder to get stuff right now with what I had planned for this year to get more GameCube games and what actually happened this year. Yeah, it, it didn't exactly go according to plan with the whole pandemic situation. I was trying to go out to conventions to pick up more GameCube games, and then on top of that, the game spiked heavily in terms of pricing all over the internet because everyone just went to uh, buying online. But I did manage to get an order in with GameStop actually for their Black Friday weekend. They had a pretty good deal going on for some retro games. So I put an order in there. I figured we look at that. And then I did have a an order I put in a little while ago for the GameCube, just some extra games to add to the collection I thought we would look at here. So if you guys enjoyed the video, make sure you like it uh, on the way out and subscribe if you're new here. So the first thing I wanted to show you guys was something I did order uh, earlier this year actually, and it's not any games for the GameCube, but I saw it pop up on eBay and I thought it was a good thing to pick up as like a just in case or to fill in some of the parts of the collection that I was missing, which had to do with manuals. So this, believe it or not, is just a whole case of different manuals. And there are actually a lot in here. So we have manuals and cover art. That way, as you guys have seen here, I've already been getting games that don't have any, uh, that don't have any manuals or cover art. They're just like disc only based games. So when I saw this, I figured, you know what? It was pretty cheap because it's just, it's just cover art and actual full manuals here. I don't think anything in here is too like crazy or, or super valuable, but for trying to complete the collection and make sure it's solid, this is just a good way to at least have an out if I just find a disc only version of a game, maybe it's in a lot or something. And it even came with like all of the kind of the precautions booklets so that I can fill in as well to make sure everything's complete. Now you don't usually find manuals and cover art in this quantity all at once online. You can usually search for each one individually and just kind of cross your fingers and hope that someone has it listed for some reason. Maybe the disc they had is just bad and they realize that the cover art, the manual is valuable on its own. So I figured, hey, might as well grab this just in case down the road I need them. Now I did put in an order the other day. It's not gonna be here probably before, I would say even the end of the year, just based on how shipping time has been recently uh, with a slightly larger GameCube order with a system even. And uh, I wanted to still be able to do one of these before the end of the year. So I can't count on that being here, but I figure we'll have another update on the GameCube collection in January, maybe midway through there as I get more stuff, if I can find them, of course. This, however, I would consider to be more filler, although I am I am happy about one of the games that I grabbed here to actually start playing right away. The person actually did a pretty good job here wrapping this up, by the way, because while, like I said, these aren't super valuable games, I guess just overall, GameCube games are, are just becoming uh, very, very hot online right now to find. It doesn't even matter if it's more common stuff. It's all going up in, in value pretty quickly. So I did get NFL Blitz 2002, and I love the Blitz series, absolutely. Here's one that actually has everything with it though. So we have the manual, disc looks good, no scratches or anything. And this is the game I actually wanted to start playing right away because the NFL Blitz back in the day was awesome. And then we have Aggressive Inline and Dave Mira 2 Freestyle BMX, these games, from what I remember, we're very similar to like what the Tony, they try to kind of capitalize on the Tony Hawk craze. I just remember seeing these occasionally when I'd be going through the different sections at like places like, oh, Blockbuster, there you go. Different rental places. I just remember seeing these pop up and uh, I never really got into them, but I figured, hey, I'm trying to collect the different GameCube games. I might as well check something like this out. And then Dave Mira, they had the demo back in the day on, I want to say it was the Tony Hawk Pro Skater 2 game they had on the PS1, I remember they had a demo and it was fun, but it wasn't as good as Tony Hawk Pro Skater um, at the time. Then we have Die Hard Vendetta, which for some reason has the sticker on the casing for Legacy of Kane, Blood Omen 2 at $12.99. That was like a GameStop sticker and they even have it on the back. So I don't know, I guess they just had the wrong casing for this one. I mean, this is what, I w what was in the picture. So it's not like they had the wrong one. It's just, I guess there they had the wrong it had the wrong casing on it. Hey, look, there's a Prima's official hint book. That's kind of cool. It comes with a hint book along with the manual. Wow, this looks like almost a full walkthrough that's with it because it has level one, has tips, objectives, images, uh, full text on what to do, it looks like. Yeah, that's not a bad way to kind of advertise it. Just give a like a little bit there for how you would be able to go through a level. And if people really like it, I guess they'd buy your strategy guide. That's an interesting way to try to sell it. Then we have Extreme G Racing. This is a, a like a fast paced racing game that I remember playing at a friend's house a long, long, Long time ago, but I never had it myself. So this is another one I wanted to check out. Uh, looks like we have it at least complete with the manual. So five games total here, no nothing too crazy, but like I said, GameCube games in general are getting up there in price. And 
when you're trying to do the whole collection, you got to get all of them, and that will eventually include all of the different sports titles and everything. So you got to go from the, the low end of the collection all the way up to the high end. You got to get them all. So this is the order I put in with GameStop. They sent it in two different boxes because it's it's six games total. It was buy two, get one free, so buy two, get third free. And once I realized that that was on all used games, which includes the retro section. So if you ever see that pop up on GameStop's website, a little bit of advice, go check out their retro section because most times that is included in that sale and if you buy three $50 games that are actually fairly rare, you get them with one of them being free. So instead of 150, it's $100. And I was trying to take advantage of that here. I got six games, but something's going on with GameStop and I, it might be because the pandemic and the situation now, they're getting less trade-ins. Their website is like cleared out, but they split them up into two different packages, mostly because I think one came from probably a different warehouse or something. So these are all cartridges and I thought it'd be interesting to see which ones they exactly send out. Uh, when it comes to the label, how it looks. Uh, if it is authentic, that's another big one that people always question about this because we've heard stories about games coming out from GameStop and them being like reproductions or fake games, which I sure, that could happen. It happens on eBay all the time too, so it wouldn't shock me. But first one I got was Super Mario, All-Star Super Mario World. I had, I still have Super Mario All-Stars, but not Super Mario All-Stars with Super Mario World. So I saw this on their site, surprisingly, and I was like, well, let's let's grab that one. And the label itself looks good, actually. There's no major like rips or tears or anything like that on it. There was a little bit of, I don't know if it was glue or whitening, because a lot of these places back in the day would put stickers directly on the label itself. And it's the most frustrating thing when you see that out in the wild. Now on the back, this is torn up pretty well. And I guess if it was gonna be one or the other, the front or the back to be torn up, I guess I'd rather have this back label ripped because you can replace this backing and generally you can find all the same information on other ones and it's a pretty easy change. You just kind of take these screws out, pop the back on. I actually don't have the driver here. I looked around, I thought I did. I think I have that at home. So when I get back, I'll also get some pictures of any of the boards here for these different Super Nintendo games and put them up on screen. Next, we have a game that I actually did not own and I remember wanting to get it back in the day and I just never got around to it and that is Super Bomberman. This label looks a little more worn than the Super Mario All-Star Super Mario World. However, it is complete and not destroyed at all, so that's good. And then on the back, it's also not destroyed. And you know what's nice is these cartridges are not like yellowed really badly. Sometimes what you'll get is like one side will be gray and the other side will be like this really bad faded kind of yellow. Nope, these are gray all the way around. They don't appear to be uh, two different tones anyway. And then the third Super Nintendo game I did get is Kirby's Superstar eight games in one. I never owned this, I always rented it. I rented it probably like three or four times back in the day. And obviously, I mean, this is an awesome game to pick up. It looks really good. On, like I said, on the back looks good. The label on the front, eh, looks it looks a little worn around the edge here, like where it kind of makes that right turn, right angle there with that sharp edge. But it's not ripped up, great news there. Yeah, this, this looks good. The pins look solid on the bottom. This does you. This one does use the extra pins on the outside. And uh, what I'll do is I'll also open this one up and get a picture of the inside of it. But these ones like this are actually a bit harder to reproduce because these extra pins on the outside. You very you definitely need uh, certain boards, I'll say, to make this one work. And while those are Super Nintendo games that I picked up there and they don't necessarily fit in, I guess, with like the GameCube collecting right now, these do. And I've thought about it a bit more when it comes to getting Game Boy and Game Boy Advance games because of the Game Boy Advance player that I have on that GameCube right now, and I uh, have access to GBI, which is the Game Boy interface, better than what Nintendo has on that Game Boy disc uh, that you have to find for like 60 bucks or something. If you have access to like the homebrew side and you use GBI, much, much better. And I went ahead and grabbed a couple of Game Boy Advance games during the Black Friday weekend because I figured why not. And I did grab Fire Emblem, just the, the Fire Emblem on the Game Boy Advance. And I'm gonna explain why I grabbed this one. And I also grabbed Fire Emblem and the Sacred Stones. Now, you might be wondering why I got these ones in particular, because I will admit they are a little more expensive on uh, GameStop site. Now, with the deals they had going on where they had percentages taken off of it, and I believe one of these was even free, it still was a little more expensive. Now, the reason I went through GameStop here is because if you go on eBay, what's interesting about this game, Pokemon and Zelda Minish Cap, 
these games, for some reason, this group of games are, are the most like reproduced and bootleg games online. Like you'll go on eBay and it really is a toss up. Even be, even if the person isn't necessarily reproducing and selling them, they may have bought it as a reproduction and they think it's a real Fire Emblem or a real Pokemon game or any of that. There are some telltale signs you can look for like for the casing itself even, where it might be a little off, or if you just take a look at the board, usually you can tell, but it is a massive roll of the dice most times when you're going on eBay looking for this. I figure if I got it from GameStop, if it was uh, bootlegged, I could just return it without too much issue. However, I do have the tri-tip screwdriver here, so I can open these up and we can double check them. And a quick look at the boards, they do look authentic, completely legit here. Sometimes you'll see these third party, we'll say bootleg, cartridges that will have a battery, even though Game Boy Advance games technically don't need them. The reason Pokemon games like Sapphire, as an example, would use a battery is to keep the clock inside of the inside of the cartridge going. Whereas when they made the shift to Game Boy Advance, they had a flash memory here that did not require that typical battery that we have in Game Boy games and Super Nintendo games to keep the save data. So generally when you open these up, you can see like Nintendo's etchings on here. Uh, you can see that there's no battery, any of that. We have actual mask ROM here uh, that seem legit. So these at this time, I'm gonna say that these are completely legit, which is good. And the boards themselves look to be in pretty good shape. I would say the Sacred Stones looks to be in better shape here, whereas the pins on this one could use a bit of a, a scrubbing, a little bit of a cleaning. But now that you take them apart, it's pretty easy to take this board out and just kind of scrub it up really well. No, 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 maybe I will look into Game Boy Advance collecting. It's just getting Game Boy Advance games with the cardboard box and the insert and, and the manuals, that's tough because those boxes basically just disintegrated over time. But just getting, the, I guess, just at least the cartridges would be pretty cool. These are very resilient. Like, the, the Game Boy Advance cartridges would take a beating. It's just the library itself was pretty good. There were a lot of different games on here. And some of the top tier games on the Game Boy Advance were really, really good. So, I don't know. It kind of does fit in pretty well with, like, the GameCube collecting to have it next to the, the GameCube with the Game Boy Advance player. So, maybe I'll order Game Boy Advance games from time to time as I find them online at good prices. So, not bad. I would say overall for these pickups, the cartridges here were pretty good price. As for the GameCube games, the, just in general, common GameCube games are getting up there. They used to be average, like I think four or five dollars each. Now they're getting closer to like eight dollars each for commons, like on average. That's pretty high for a system like the GameCube. There are some games that I wouldn't mind picking up on eBay, but I feel like the price is getting to the point where I want to see it in person if I'm gonna kind of uh, take that kind of money and invest it in, like Cubivore as an example that's way up there. And I'm hoping things start to go back to normal in 2021, where we can do things like go to conventions and I can actually take a look through them. Because when I was doing that, these are all games that I would see at some of the regular conventions I would visit. So here's hoping 2021 uh, is a bit better for that and we can have some cool videos where I actually go to conventions with some other people on YouTube and we try to pick up GameCube games and make videos for that one. So here's hoping for a 2021 that's much safer for everyone and a lot more fun. Thanks guys for watching. Let me know what you think of any of these pickups uh, down below and I'll see you guys next time.